In 1981, my mom was pregnant with me. She was about to give birth and she went to the hospital. She knew it was coming, but as soon as she gets into the hospital, the doctor says, you know, it's only seven now and your baby's only coming around midnight. And my mom was saying, no, she's not. I know she's coming right now, I can feel it. And the doctor, of course, he was a doctor, he had years of experience, so he just said, you know, she's only coming at midnight, you better just stay there and wait. As soon as he leaves the room and walks a little bit down the hallway, he hears a baby crying, and that was me. My mom, it was her only wife. And so that's how I was born. My mom, she just had to take care of me right there. <laughs> That's a funny story. So I'm from a sale city. It's a, a mid-sized town in northeastern Brazil. Uh, it's a really beautiful place. I love Maceió. It's a paradise. It is more kind of a Caribbean kind of city. We have very beautiful beach. In Maceió there are a, lots of coconut trees. We have blue and green seas. Just beautiful, white sand, and it's just fantastic. One thing that's nice about my hometown is that you can walk down the coast at night and they have shows going on. They have a little um, place where you can buy crafts, crafts from the city, made from people from the city. It's just very beautiful. We just It's just a lovely city. Then I really miss the beauty of Maceió. We live on a place that was suffering because we are actually on a, on a dictatorship in Brazil. The economy just suffered a lot. And as a consequence, like food, the food, the price of the food is just really, really high. Because of that, we had a situation, I remember, where everything was so high, the price of milk and meat, that we actually had nothing to eat besides eggs. And so we had eggs in the morning for breakfast, eggs in the afternoon, and eggs for dinner. My mom was kind of creative, she trying to make eggs in different ways. We did what we could do. My family and I, we used to live by a river that through the years became very polluted. And so, but it was, the river just ran just right by our house. But we had problems with flash floods during winter. Back then my house, our house was, was lower than the ground, the street level. The flood came in the middle of the night and I just remember waking up, my mom was yelling, she put me on top of the dresser, I just see all this water coming in, this very dirty water coming in, and then I start crying, I, was, I had no idea what's going on, I just got, I just woke up, my mom was just yelling and she put it, she started crying out and putting me on top of the dresser, so then I had mom crying, me crying, everybody crying. <laughs> Nobody knew what was really going on, it's just the water is coming fast. We we were poor, we didn't have that much. So, so we used to sleep on the floor with a um, thin mattress. And so it was fortunate that we woke up before anything else happened. I remember that when I was about 8 years old, I demanded that I would be baptized. My mom was Catholic and so I just told her I want to be baptized, I really want to do that, so I was baptized, I thought that was the right thing to do. So when I was about 8 years old, I remember my mom, she had a friend, she was a member of the church, she was Mormon. She uh, sent some sister missionaries to my mom's house, they gave my mom a book of Mormon, however my mom was very strict Catholic and she um, did not listen to anybody message. She kept the Book of Mormon for a while, basically put it aside. Of course, I was curious about, I love reading, I didn't have any books in the house to read. I say, I'm gonna go and take a look at this book. So I went all the way up on the closet, the little closet she had it, and she threw everything in there. And I got the Book of Mormon, I dig in inside the box and I got it out. And then I started reading. And I remember reading about a man, an angel, a light. I was so young that in my mind I thought I was reading the Bible. So it turned out that my mom gave the Book of Mormon back to the sister missionaries. She didn't want to listen to the message anymore. And I was really upset. When the missionaries used to come there, I was just like hiding behind the door listening to everything. 
So I remember once for a homework that I had at school, I had to get like a Bible from a friend of mine. I borrow it and I had to do some homework about the Bible, so I started reading it. Before I gave this back to her, I just kept reading it, trying to find the story of, of Laban. And I kept reading and reading, I didn't find an angel and I couldn't find Laban. That was my first encounter with the Book of Mormon until later on when I was 19. When I was about 12 though, I really wanted to know more about God. However, I didn't have a Bible. We didn't have a Bible. It was just too expensive. And I remember praying and asking God to somehow give me a Bible as a gift. Then one day when I came back from school, I look at the top of my fridge and as soon as I came home, I remember looking over there and seeing this tiny gray book. So when I pick it up, I noticed there was one of those New Testaments translated by the Gideons. I was so happy, so happy. I couldn't believe my eyes. Basically, that was my first testimony about prayer. When I, just very young, asked God to have a Bible and then He gave me the New Testament. Then I started reading like crazy. I started reading in the morning, early in the morning before going to school. And I remember reading the book of Matthew like I don't know how many times. I remember reading about fasting, so I used to fast. I only skipped my breakfast at all I could do back then. <laughs> I remember the commandment of keeping the Sabbath. So I picked Sunday. And I used to be really mad when my mom would send me to the grocery store on Sundays. Sometimes they send me to go buy beer. <laughs> so when I was um, middle school, I had a friend who she was a Protestant. She was from a church called the Assembly of God. And she invited me. And of course, I say, oh yeah, I want to go. But I knew my mom would not let me. And so I just skipped class. Walked all the way to her church. And I attended the meeting, I believe, twice. I remember watching a show called Dr. Queen. The woman doctor. The doctor woman. Medicine woman. I love this show. For some reason, remember that they used to meet on Sunday mornings to go to their church. And something, something just told me that I should look for a church to meet on Sunday morning. Didn't make any sense back then, but now it makes sense to me. God does things in strange ways. <laughs> then later in high school, I had a friend and she was um, Jehovah Witness. And then she noticed, this friend of mine, she noticed that I was interested in, and she just asked me if I want to start learning with her. I used to go to her house, so I didn't have to say anything to my mom because we're classmates, so just studying. I decided to go visit the church. and So then I learned with them, and I had a, a lovely experience. I really, really liked, I really enjoyed learning with Jehovah Witness. And I thought they were really great. They didn't fully answer my questions. I still had a bunch of questions unanswered. So I didn't join the Jehovah Witness and I kept looking for another church. So that's one of the things I've always, I've always been looking for a different church, just waiting for the right time. So finally when I turned 18 and I had just finished high school, there was something on my mind just saying, you gotta look for a church. I was basically I was thinking about afterlife. And in my mind came the thought that, that that's not just it. It doesn't make any sense to go through much pain and sorrow for nothing. We probably are here for a purpose. And these thoughts came to my mind. And so that's when I decided that I was going to look for a church. It really scared me to think that I was going to go through my life. And then at the end of my life, look back and see that I have done nothing nothing to God and I, I and I decide I'm not gonna wait until when I'm old to become religious all of a sudden I'm gonna do that now because I really have this necessity I really feel like doing that so I remember my brother coming home from from school and he was telling me about Mormon missionaries that went to his house